If this cup of tea were too hot, I could wait for it to cool down. Heat, labelled Q, flows from the tea to the room, reducing the internal energy, hence the temperature, of the tea. This could continue until the tea and the room reach the same temperature. Watching tea cool down may not be very exciting, but there's an important principle here. Think about it. If the tea were too cold, I couldn't wait for it to get hotter. This is because heat cannot flow from colder to hotter objects. Here we have placed a Stirling engine between the hot tea and the cold room. Some of the heat input to the engine flows out to the room as before, but some of it is instead converted into work, labelled W, which turns the wheel. Here's a brief explanation of this particular engine. Pause to study the captions if you're interested. Note that there are many other types of heat engine. The second law of thermodynamics means that only a proportion of heat input can be converted to net output by working. Some heat output must occur during each cycle. This is why you need a cold heat sink as well as a hot heat source. However, hot and cold are relative terms. So far, we've used a hot drink as a heat source and the room as a heat sink. If we use a block of ice as a heat sink, we can now use the room as a heat source. Note how the direction of heat flow and the rotation of the wheel are both reversed. However, work output is still achieved. Efficiency is the proportion of heat input converted to work output. Increasing efficiency of engines can reduce fuel costs. This was the original reason for the study of thermodynamics, which, applied more widely, has become one of the most fundamental branches of science, having implications in disciplines such as atmospheric physics, geology, chemistry, and even black holes and cosmology.